Hello and welcome. I am Scrubberlock and this is City of Heroes on the Rebirth server. We are with our mutation stalker Tiger Shrike who is level 34. 380,000 XP needed to get to level 35 at our next superpower. We have 16.5 million influence so our influence is holding up quite nicely. And we are talking to Peter Stemitz who doesn't have a story arc for us yet. We're not on a story arc yet but this might be one. Because he's talking about a librarian in the Circle of Thorns. He says, I have a mission for you, Tiger Strike. A librarian named Edgar Torvald was recently abducted by the Circle of Thorns. Torvald's been doing some research for the Midnight Squad, that group of academics who try to help the city's heroes with magical conundrums. They think the Circle might have taken him because he's trying to map out the unknown areas of Oren Vega. I don't think we've been at Oren Vega with this character yet. This might be the Library of Lost Souls. Maybe. But I don't recall the Midnight Squad being in the game when the Library of Lost Souls first came out, because my original character did it at the mid-30s, so I'm not sure. If it's the Library of Lost Souls, that is a very cool story arc. Now what I don't know is how we're going to perform at plus two against Circle. This could be nearly impossible. We're going to try it. If it turns out to be too annoying to deal with the debuffing, at level, uh, at this level with plus twos, where we're fighting like plus threes that are debuffing me, and like I'm already down to a 65% chance to hit them, and then they debuff me down to 30, and we can't hit at all. Um, I'm just going to turn it back down. It's kind of wimpy to do, but I really have no desire to be in a four hour mission because I can't hit anything. Um, so we'll just see. We will, maybe what we'll do is we'll try it. We'll uh, if we need to, lower it to plus one. If we need to lower it further, we'll lower it to plus zero. The problem is everything but the specters is going to be incredibly ridiculous if they're plus zero, because it'll be too easy. So we're just going to have to try it and see. So this is a level 34 mission. We could see up to level 37s in this mission. Um, so we're just going to have to see what happens, guys. As of the date of this recording, we are now five days away from the one-year anniversary of Bree Royce's um, article on Massively Overpowered that included a link to the video. I checked that video link is now dead, so he took it down from YouTube, or YouTube took it down. The video by Destroyer Destroyer and the interview with him that outed the private servers. And it was on the 15th of April. Today is April 10th, one year later. And by the 18th, Brie had written an article that she'd been in a Discord all night, um, and she had talked to Leandro, and that Leandro had said, maybe I'll release my server if I can scrub it of whatever he had to scrub it, scrub it of, I guess, the, the data of the players on his server. I don't know exactly what he was scrubbing it from, because he wasn't, she wasn't clear about that in the article. Maybe he wasn't clear about that with her. Um... So, and we're going to trouble hitting these guys as well. Um, so, sh uh, sh so it's been about a year since that uh, that art first article came out, and within you know a week or two of it, we were playing City of Heroes again, which is not something anybody thought we were going to be able to ever do. Except, I guess, the people playing on Leandro's server who were doing it and knew it was possible. The rest of us didn't even know it was possible, right? When the game was shut down and uh, there were rumors that there was a private server, but nobody, most people didn't believe them. And so, um, we need to find Edgar Torvald. I don't know if we need to beat up all the rest of these guys, but let's see how we do against these plus twos. Definitely want to use build-up on this guy. Because he's probably got lethal resistance. Um, so yeah, the game has been back for a year, so it just seems normal to be playing it. But it certainly wasn't back then, and as I was discussing, and I've mentioned this before, as I was discussing with my supergroup mates, 
that la about this time last year, I was playing Champions Online because I had I had in early April of 2019, which was one year ago, I had gotten the urge to play City of Heroes again. I was just I don't I hadn't thought about City of Heroes in probably close to 10 years, and all of a sudden I was like, I want to play it. I wish I could play it. I'm so frustrated that I can't play it. I, I don't want to play any other MMOs. I want to play this one. And so I played Champions Online, which I don't like anywhere near as much as this. I don't like the UI as much. I don't like the control system. I don't like any of it. The music, any of it. I, I The animations, the graphical style, I like this so much better. And so I was playing Champions Online. I, I did what I always do. I got to, like, level 20 and then didn't get any further because I just wasn't enjoying it. But at the time, I was, like, level, let's say, 12 or something in Champions Online, and I was playing that and wishing I could play City of Heroes and uh, you know knowing I can't but wishing I could and then all of a sudden like within days of starting to play Champions Online and wishing I could play City of Heroes I heard there was a private server and then within days of that maybe we'll be able to play on a private server someday and I was thinking well maybe by the fall and then within a couple weeks a private server was up and I was watching video of people playing it so this guy is going to be difficult because he's a plus three lieutenant who's going to be resistant to my attacks. So we're probably going to need a yellow. We're probably going to want to throw in a red. Put on some resistance. And let's pound him and see how we do. Not too bad. That's not too terrible. That, that initial lead really does it for us. So now we just gotta hit him one more time. You can see how hard it is to hit though, because he's got me debuffed really badly. There it is. We got him. Not too bad. I mean, I had to use a bunch of inspirations and all my powers to do it, but he's fine. We're fine, and we defeated him. So I was saying to my supergroup this morning, you know, had I known that I was going to have the power to wish for something and make it come true, which is really what it feels like happened with City of Heroes, I wished I could play it, and the wish came through. I said, maybe I should have wished for $100 million or something like that instead of for City of Heroes. And one of my supergroup mates said, I don't know, I think City of Heroes might be worth more than $100 because of the joy it has brought him in the last year and all the new friends I made and, and you guys on the guild. And I said, you know what, you're probably right. There's Some things are just priceless. And, um, oh boy, is that him? I wonder if that's Torvald. And one of the things we were saying is, you know, of course now in spring of 2020, what's going on is, in the whole world pretty much, is everybody's under one type of quarantine lockdown or whatever or another from the coronavirus. A lot of us are working from home, playing from home, not going anywhere other than maybe out to walk the dog and to the grocery store. And a lot of people are socially isolated. And, you know, we were saying that City of Heroes is a great stress reliever, right? And it's been a stress reliever for me for a long time. And as I've mentioned on this very series, when I first started playing City of Heroes, a couple months after it started, um, I my first postdoctoral research job ran out. And I was unemployed for a little while. And we'll look at the clue in a sec. City of Heroes was one of the ways I distracted myself. So let's take a look at the clue. Yep, he was looking for a particular room called the Magic Library, and that is his body. So now we're going to... And we're on the story arc. This is the Library of Lost Souls, I think. So there was nothing you could have done, Tiger Shrike. Torvald was probably dead before anyone even knew he was missing. He did leave a clue. The Magic Library, he indicates, might be worth checking out. Won't bring Torvald back, but it will make his death mean something. So, does it say it yet? Yep, Library of Lost Souls. This is a good story arc. We'll keep trying plus two. That worked on the last in the last uh, um, mission, so we'll keep trying it. He says, "Well, I've talked to all the experts on Orenbega, and I've had them take a look at this map Torvald left us when he died. I think it may be possible to reach the map's magic library. If Torvald thought." The place was important enough to record it with his last moments. It bears investigation. So oh, 
we are going to go and check it out. And the library is in Brickstown. So let's wander back rather than having to go all the way across the zone. I guess it's not super efficient to do it this way because all this does is really teleport us to the train station at Talos Island and we were already on Talos Island. But it's a little bit quicker than me running across the zone. And then we can just go straight to Brickstown. It's a shame the, or the uh, Ouroboros portal doesn't also have uh, ways to get to places like Bricktown and um, Croto and stuff like that, but I guess they didn't want people to use it the way I'm using it, like as a transporter. All right, so the Magic Library is over there. So yeah, I, over the years, used City of Heroes as great stress release. As I mentioned, a friend of mine lost his job the same week that my postdoc ran out, and we were both essentially unemployed at the same time. His, mine was at least expected. Um, you know, my postdoc advisor had told me months earlier that the money was going to run out in July. It was really interesting, so she wasn't sure how much time I had left. I went out of town to do to give a presentation about my project to do a conference on um, at the end of April, like 27th and 27, 28, something like that. And this game came out on the 28th or 29th of April in 2004. And literally on my way back to where I was living in Seattle. So on my way back to Seattle, this guy's a huge uh, collision box. When I, on my way back to Seattle, I stopped in a video game store or something, or the mall, something like that, and I uh, bought a copy of City of Heroes. And I had been at this conference, but I had left in the morning, right? And I'm sure my postdoc advisor would have, had she known my schedule, which she really didn't, expected me to come into work upon a returning. You know, I got there at 12 noon, 1 o'clock, and uh, I was coming in from Vancouver, and I'm sure she would have expected me to go into work for the rest of the day. But I didn't. I bought City of Heroes. I knew it was probably coming up that I was going to hear from her that the position was running out. And I wanted some stress release and I bought City of Heroes and played that for the day. And went into work the next day. So that was a Tuesday, I think, and I went in then on Wednesday. Video games in those days, I don't know what they do now, but they used to release on Tuesdays for whatever bizarre reason. Right, so we're going to need to take this guy out first. I'm going to go ahead and speed things up. This behemoth might see me. But I'm hoping... No, it's a lieutenant. With a lieutenant build up even, I don't think we can one-shot him. No, not even close. Okay, we got him though. And now it's just me against these guys. Now, with my scrapper, I was always going crazy trying to get out of the, um, the quicksand because it debuffs your defense. You can see it. We're at minus 28%. But I kind of don't care that much with this character because she has all of her regen abilities and because she doesn't rely on defense to survive. Right? I mean, it's better to have the 6% than minus 28. But the minus 28 doesn't give him a 28% bonus. Right? Oh. Let's take this guy out first. It doesn't give him a bonus to hit. It just removes all of my defense. One thing I like about the behemoths is they're very easy to knock down. Which helps mitigate damage. Right, there he goes again. So yeah, I was uh, using it as stress release even the day it launched. To some degree, I knew I was going to hear... I knew that my position was running out, I just didn't know exactly what date. And she actually I told me in May, okay, you've got until July 31st. Right? In April, I wasn't sure how long I had. I thought I might have until September, end of September, but when I guess when she looked into the grant funds that she had available, she said, no, all I have is till July 31st. And uh, that was not a happy day. 
And I went and played City of Heroes a lot that day too. That was at the end of May, I think. So I have used this game as stress release quite a lot. Okay, which one of these guys is quicksanding me? Oops, no, I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, one of them isn't bad. Three of these guys in a row is rough. Again, because of the stone, they have a high defense. There's a lot of deflection going on. Alright, now we're down to one. You'll see. No problem, right? It's just the three in a row is pretty brutal. Because you're missing them a lot, and they're all laying down the quicksand, so one of them has got it up no matter what. We're still under some sort of a debuff, because we're only at 2%, and I think we normally have more than that. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, we weren't hidden. Right. While you're hidden, you have a higher defense. <clears throat> not that it matters, because nobody's hitting you while you're hidden. Helps in groups, right, if you're hidden and you're, somebody's throwing out AoEs and at your group members and you're hidden, you're, you have a dodge. And in fact, this is melee defense. We have a higher, um, if you look in here, we have a higher range defense. Right, not ranged, um, AoE. Right, 45% strength to AoE. That doesn't help me much at all. Right, because they don't attack if I'm soloing. But if you're in a group, you can avoid the AoEs that are being thrown on your group. Now, this is going to be an interesting fight. Oh, man. All right, we're going to have to try to pull these guys, because that's a lieutenant in there. Let's see what we got. Let's see if we got lucky or not. Look how much damage he did to that guide, though. He's half, half hit points. Okay, we got two of them. We didn't get the lieutenant, so that's good. Ugh, missed the assassination. That's bad. Take that guy out. Back to this guy. Are they not really debuffing me? These are the ice guys. I think the ice guys do more like slowing than killing your um, two hit. And we can deal with slows because we have hasten. Got him. Got him. Okay. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Now we have to hide again and go after this demon lord I definitely want to wait for the build up and take a two hit buff because he will debuff me not doing too bad I mean given that he is plus three to me we're not doing bad at all. So one thing you may wonder, right, because you could think about this in terms of numbers. Why do I always hit Reconstruction first? And theoretically, Reconstruction does a percentage of your hit points, right? So in theory, if you hit Dull Pain first, which will heal you all the way up, and then you hit Reconstruction, you'll get more total hit points back from the Reconstruction because you're getting a, you're going to get the percentage of your Dull Pain buffed hit points, and it'll give you more. So why don't I hit Dull Pain first? Well, the reason is Reconstruction comes back right away and Dull Pain does not. So what I do is Reconstruction, Dull Pain, Reconstruction, rather than Dull Pain, Reconstruction, wait, 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 Reconstruction, you see. So the idea is you use the, the Dull Pain as a hit point buff and a heal in between the time of when the Reconstruction 
is going to regenerate. You're going to wake back up as a power, right? Re recharge. And so, um, that's the logic of why I do it. Reconstruction comes back in like 45 seconds or something, and Dull Pain comes back in like 3 minutes. If you look at the info, right? Dull Pain comes back in 3 minutes and 3 seconds. The Reconstruction's going to be back in 30 seconds, right? So you do 30 seconds, reconstruct all the way back up here. About 15 seconds later, if you're back down because you're taking pounding Dull Pain back here, 15 seconds later, reconstruction again. So that's why I do it that way. Got a clue. So we have an inscribed crystal. So if I remember right, the story on this with the Library of Lost Souls is that they have a library of souls, which is why it's called that. And they've got people, like people's spirits trapped inside these crystals. I'm going to start running out of accuracy enhancements here. Or inspirations. I always say enhancement when I mean inspiration. I usually don't say inspiration when I mean enhancement, which is weird. Range powers for the win. I love that. Got him. We're handling these plus twos pretty well. I think better than my scrapper was handling plus ones. That's that's down to the assassination guys and the fact that we can get such a big lead against these bad guys. Um, and in particular the lieutenants and stuff. We get them down to half hit points before they even get a chance to strike us, which helps a lot. We can also sneak up on them so they can't attack me until I've already gotten a hit on them. Oops. Except when I do something stupid like that. Wow, minus 52 to my defense. So they've stacked it. Right now we need dump paint. The problem here is I can't hit. Come on. Finally. Yeah, that mistake turned what should have been an easy battle, where I had assassinated one of them and just beat up the other one, into a really tough battle. And I've got to turn off super speed. Okay, so that's a dead end. Let's take a look. We need two more crystals. We don't... I don't think we need to defeat everybody, so let's... We've fought enough guys. Let's see if we can find the crystals. Hi, guys. All right, well, I like fighting behemoths, so we'll definitely fight them. Look at that. Three hits and he's dead, and that's only it only took three because he healed. Yeah, the uh, minion is almost tougher than the lieutenant because you can't hit him. Oh, there's the librarian. Okay, we're going to have to defeat him. Who else is around? Nobody else? Alright, well, we're definitely going to fight the librarian. Hey, buddy. We're going to hasten up. I think I may just take this guy out first. Now we're going to placate. Right, and as soon as I hide, assassinate. Again, we get this nice big lead on the librarian. He's now down to half his hit points. Look at that. The knockdown is stopping him from doing almost anything. And focus recharges so fast now that you can almost apply it as soon as they get back up. Alright, now we gotta find the crystals. In this impossible... Whoops, whoops. No, oh, that was lucky. It 
dropped me right where one is, and I heard the glowy. All right, there we go. And there's the next one. They didn't have that years ago, and that was really tough in uh, in this map. Oh man, was it hard. Sometimes to find the, the little like crevices and stuff. Although this was pretty, this wouldn't have been too hard because it's just in the open. Wow, look at that. He didn't even have a chance to heal. Oh, wait. I didn't see those guys. That was sloppy. And now we can click it. All right, guys, got another clue. So we have three crystals, inscribed, shadowed, and glowing. We'll head out. And now we'll talk to our buddy. Oh, we got to take the crystal to Azoria. All right, I'm going to pause it here, and I'll bring you back when we are at Azoria's side. We are back. And there is Azoria. She says, I have felt strange vibrations of these crystals since you brought them up from the ruins of Organ Vega. They hold a great deal of energy and are wrapped in layers of spells. I would guess that they are some sort of tool used in the circle's magical training. Each crystal is a repository of knowledge. I will study them and give my findings to Peter Stamets at once. I must tell you one more thing, Tiger Shrike. You appeared in one of my visions last night. I see much danger in your future, as well as much opportunity. I do not know if it is for good or ill, but I believe we shall soon learn a great deal about the Circle of Thorns. And now we're going to call our contact. And he says, Magi is studying the artifacts. I'll let you know as soon as I know anything. And so we're just raiding the library, and right now all we know is there are crystals. So I'm going to stop here, guys. We're at about a half an hour, so I think that's long enough. I'll bring you back when we get to our next mission with Peter Stemmitz. But until then, I am Scrapperlock, and this has been City of Heroes.